It's going coming in, uh, seeing things one year later. Obviously, a lot has changed. And really, as Clyde uh, tells you a little bit more about this situation, um, a lot has gone on here in the way of rebuilding and recovery and everything else, right? Yeah, there he is. There's a lot going on. We'll talk about some of that in greater detail at 530. But, you know, we talked as well to people about what they saw that day almost a year ago. And they say they didn't see a funnel cloud approaching this community. What they saw was a mass of black clouds coming across the river, skipping the river, and then blasting into this community so that in minutes, a once vital community had really been hit hard. One of its leaders killed. Its city hall and several dozen more buildings or two dozen more buildings destroyed. And yet the mayor tells us one year later, he sees progress. Slow progress to be sure, but progress nonetheless. Moscow, Ohio, March 2nd, 2012, as its mayor, Tom Souter, first encountered the fury a tornado left behind. It actually ruined uh, three of the tires on my car just from a few miles down the road till I got up to here, just running over debris trying to get there. Here is the Washington Township Fire Station on Moscow's outskirts, still under repair and closed a year after the storm. Remnants of its roof draped over tree limbs like oversized Christmas tinsel. The wind came through, peeled all of that stuff off, and carried it, what would you guess, what did we say, 200 yards maybe? Yeah. That's powerful wind. Yes, it is. The Riverside Village and its mayor may never forget the day it nearly died, almost killed by a storm that heaped tons of debris on its streets, tore up often historic homes, and uprooted longtime shade trees. To think back and... You know, there was a lot of times you just stopped and shed a few tears and wondered what, why, and, but it's, it's just you had to deal with it. You had to grab it and make decisions and move forward. Mayor Souter remembers moving forward in his official role while relying on his wife to take care of their home. And the saddest moment of that day, the realization that council member Carol Forsyth died trapped under the debris of her home. Sad, he says, and helpless. That was a thing that keeps coming back to me. A, a feeling of helplessness, even though there was plenty of people there helping. But one year later, as we discuss the damage, the loss, the mayor is looking to the rebirth of his community. Yes, there are still badly damaged structures, city hall, a local bar, and the post office across the street from it. One of the two oldest houses in the village, its fate still uncertain. But some homeowners have rebuilt, often on elevated foundations, anticipating the next disaster. The mayor talks with optimism about marketing Moscow for its small town atmosphere next to metropolitan Cincinnati and its revitalized housing stock. You know, the devastation's almost turned into opportunity to change some things, to maybe be a little more progressive and move forward. And yes, Moscow has lost about 15% of its 300 citizens. Some will come back. But Mayor Souter says he's betting on those who are still here, despite all the loss, the discomfort, and the frustration. They're all recovering. Some, it's going to take a lot longer than others, but uh, it, we'll get through it. And uh, Mayor Souter and I also had a chance to talk about what his frustrations were. And what he shared with me primarily was the whole issue of government red tape, right. where you can build it, rebuild in this area, where you can't rebuild, how you rebuild when you do so. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, he talked about what he was grateful about. He was grateful for the elected officials and their staffs who gave a lot of assistance and really for the other communities in the area that came to Moscow's rescue and the volunteers that came in here with them, rolled their sleeves up and helped to get this community back on its feet. And right. you were talking earlier about the timeline, a little technical.